well, we've had all these sound problems and the sound people are convinced it's me, so. <laughs> maybe, maybe I talk too much. We watched Monk, my wife and I did this. Anyone watch the series Monk? Do you remember when he was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As I get older, I feel like I'm more like Monk. Wait a minute. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, I don't know what the worship team had for breakfast this morning, but uh, we need some. Man, that was... Uh, thank you guys. Thank you guys so, so much. Just an awesome job. Let's give them a hand. Let's give them a hand. I just tell people that's the best part of the service. Don't come late. So, okay, I'm continuing this series uh, again. Finding chaos in the finding God's favor in the midst of chaos. And uh, Annie, thank you for your testimony today. Isn't it in His presence the the antidote for chaos? Isn't there peace in His presence? Did you feel His pre peace today? And uh, last week we said we get His favor because He gives it to us. Right? He blesses us with His favor because He loves us. And he blesses us, and I want to talk today about his kingdom is still at hand. And I get that. Isn't it interesting that uh, how was the greatest event in the history of the world announced? The, the birth, life, ministry, death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. How was it announced? The Messiah is here. No, interesting enough, if you go to my next slide. Now in those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. God's kingdom is at hand or near. He goes on to say that, you know, this John was fulfilling what Isaiah said, a voice crying in the wilderness. Are you a voice crying in the wilderness sometimes? And even Jesus, if you go to the next slide. Jesus, now when Jesus had heard that John had been taken into custody, he withdrew and he went up to Galilee. And again, there was a prophecy fulfilled in Isaiah there. And from that time, what did Jesus begin to preach? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So why didn't, why didn't, the, why didn't they say Jesus is here, the Son of God is here, the Messiah is here, Savior is here? But it was always this thing about a kingdom. And then I realized... It has always been God's kingdom. If you, our text today is, goes back to the books of Exodus. In uh, the third month after the sons of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on the day they came into the wilderness of Sinai, when they set up from Rephidim, they came to the wilderness of Sinai and camped in the wilderness, and Israel camped in front of the mountain. Anyone ever seen pictures of the Sinai Peninsula? It is the wilderness. I thought wilderness was like trees. It is a desert. I mean, it makes our Franklin Mountains look like Hawaii or something. You know, it is it is barren. And so they're at the mountain and Moses went up to God and the Lord called him from the mountain saying, this is what you will tell the house of Jacob and tell the sons of Israel. This is what I want you to go down and speak to the children of Israel. You yourself have seen what I did to the Egyptians, how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. How many have been born on eagles' wings by the Lord in their life? Isn't that a beautiful picture? Lord, thank you. I mean, if you read the book of Exodus, it's not really eagles' wings they were flying on, right? People were dying around them, babies dying, rivers turning into blood, etc. But now then, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you will be to me my own possession among all the peoples of the earth. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom. And this was God's plan, is that there would be a kingdom. It's his kingdom, right? And a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the sons of Israel. Remember the disciples' prayer when Jesus taught his disciples how to pray? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, right? His kingdom come, that it would come. Jesus, when he was before Pilate, and Pilate said, you're not going to answer me? Don't you know that I can crucify you or I could set you free? And Jesus said, no, no, you couldn't do anything unless my father allowed you. So God is the king of a kingdom. 
And we're supposed to be living in that kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's not necessarily in the book of Revelation, I think in chapter 19 it says, all the kingdoms of the earth have become the Lord. That's going to happen one time. The physical kingdoms of the earth. But we're part of this kingdom. Living in the favor is living in his kingdom versus living in this chaotic world, right? The world is not offering us a whole lot of joy right now. There's a couple problems with living in the kingdom. I'm going to tell you that. And we'll look at them. There's a thing about mankind. And it is we want a king. Generally, we don't want to take responsibility for our lives before the Lord. And we want someone else to do it for us. You know? You know, the Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. The Bible, we, we went the other day, speak, Lord, for your servant listens. The, Bible, the Lord wants to speak to each of us, right? You know, you may be a small group leader, a teacher, whatever. People say, hear from God for me. I've shared this verse. Those of you who know me, you've heard this verse a hundred times. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to bore you. But this verse should be etched in your mind if you'll go to the next slide. By the way, this is the next chapter. We were just in chapter 19 of Exodus. Go one chapter. How fickle is mankind? Last, well, last chapter, I'm, you're going to be your king. This chapter, all the people perceived the thunder and the lightning and the flashes of the sound of the trumpet. And this is when God was giving Moses the Ten Commandments and revealing to him. So there's fire. Remember, we live and live with a holy God. His presence to unholy people's tough. Okay, there's fire and thunder. And when the people saw it, they trembled and they stood at a distance. Now, did you tremble before the Lord today? I hope not, because when we're born again, when his spirit dwells in us, we have peace with God, right? But there is a God who is holy. And if we're not holy and we've been made holy by Jesus Christ, it's a fearful thing. Then he said, to, then they said to Moses, speak to us yourself and we will listen. But let not God speak to us, or we, it was too terrible. We looked at Samuel a couple weeks ago. What did we pray? Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. That's grace. That's the New Testament. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. The Old Testament is, no, no, don't speak to me because I am not worthy. Isaiah saw him. He said, I'm a man of unclean lips among people. Woe is me. Do it. But we have this presence of the Lord. Yeah, one chapter. That's the fickleness of human beings. You know, God understood the weaknesses of men. He even told them back then, okay, you're going to go in the land and exactly what they did, and you're going to want a king. I will be your king. Israel will be my kingdom, my special people. But you're going to get bored and want a king. And he goes, if you make a king, don't pick anybody. There are some qualifications for people for leadership. It should be an Israelite. It should be your people or whatever. So I'm going to get a little bit political tonight, okay? <laughs> Bear with me. Because we want a king and we want people to roll, rule over us, and we have a vote in this country, can I give you some voter advice? Oh, here's my voter guide. Okay. This is uh, Jethro de Bodine's advice to Moses. Jethro, his advice to Moses. He saw Moses all day ministering to people. He said, no, you can't do that. Pick people to help. And he gave four qualifications. Number one, able people, able men. Again, the Greek is, I mean, the Hebrew means men and women. You pick competent people, okay? Number two, oh, people who fear God. You know, if the fear, in the, the fear of the Lord is what? The beginning of wisdom? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. We have a lot of people don't fear God today. He is that smoking thunder, guys, if you don't know him. If his blood's been shed for you and you're in your heart, he is Abba, Papa. Okay? But here's this thing. Number three, people of truth. Okay? And number four, those who hate dishonest gain. That's my voting advice for you, okay? That you pray about that. I'm not going to endorse any candidate or whatever. But I think is. The truth is the world is all the Lord's and the fullness is his. He is our king. And we're to live in that kingdom. If we live in that kingdom, 
We have that favor. We have that peace that surpasses all understanding. It's kind of hard to understand that the kingdom of heaven is invisible to the unsaved, right? John told uh, Nicodemus, unless you're born again, you cannot even see the kingdom. So how many remember before they were born again, you thought, wow, these people are wasting their time going to church on Saturday night. I could be boogieing, you know. <laughs> well, I dated myself a little bit or whatever. Uh, but the kingdom of heaven is kind of, uh, what, what did I say? Uh, indescribable or whatever. And so how did Jesus describe the king? How did he try and show us what the kingdom was? He told parables, right? He told stories that would kind of uh, tell the kingdom in. One, if you're familiar, there was a sower went out and threw seeds. Some fell on the rocky ground and the birds ate it up. He told another one, there was a parable, a farmer planted wheat and then someone went out and planted uh, weeds that night. But here's a couple of interesting ones. If you'll go to my next slide. Yeah, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. By the way, the mustard seed is a big meme going around this week. God's speaking to people about mustard seeds. Okay. Even in our prayer before the church, someone brought up mustard seed. There's a picture of a mustard seed, tiny little seed. But he said these insignificant little things. He goes, it comes and becomes one of the biggest plants in the garden and birds will actually rest in it. That I'll take something. Don't despise the day of little things. I will do something great. Isn't that a beautiful picture of what the kingdom is? What God wants to do in our life. He wants to take the mustard seed in your heart and blossom it and let it grow. And who knows what, again, when I say, what happens if we say yes to God? Wow. I wish we'd all say yes to God. Next slide. He tells us another picture. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast or leaven, right? Uh, the bowl on the left is before anyone made uh, uh, pizza dough. We used to make pizza dough like this. And you'd put the yeast in. And I love it because you don't see it happening, do you? You start mixing it in and you don't see anything happen. But pretty soon it grows and it becomes large. So this is what happens in our lives. This yeast is in our hearts. And he's kneading it through our hearts. Not needing it, but needing it like the cooking needing or whatever. He's needing our hearts and he's expecting this to grow. Do you get a picture of what the kingdom is? The kingdom's not that we're waiting for the rapture. You know, we're going to be, you know, five people here and we're standing against the devil. No, the kingdom is a growing, living thing that God has. Next one. I love this. Hidden treasure. I put this picture up there. I had a friend in YWAM with me. We were all poor missionaries in those days. And he went to a estate sale at St. Clement's Church. How many of you remember St. Clement's? Episcopal, that's where it used to be all the rich people of El Paso went, if they didn't come here. Uh, <laughs> and he went to this estate sale and he golfed and he found a set of woods four woods here in this case, and they charge him $4 for it. He went out to play golf and someone came up to him and this is not a picture of him, but they were actually Ben Hogan. If anyone golf history nuts woods, they were actually worth some money. But he says the kingdom is like a treasure. A guy finds a treasure in a field and he hides it. And then he goes and sells everything he can and buys that field because that treasure's there. Is that our heart, the treasure that God has for us? Are you willing to pay anything for it? Well, if it doesn't interfere with my Tuesday nights, yes. You know, if it doesn't interfere with the NFL, yeah, I'm ready. You know, I'm ready. Okay. He used the pearls, another one for the pearl merchant, found this great pearl, same type thing, sold all he had, bought that pearl. Next one. The kingdom of heaven is like a fishnet. That in the end of time, he's going to grab all men up and they're going to open it and they're going to keep the good ones and the bad ones you throw back. He says, so it's going to be in the edge end of the days. So the other problem is that we either want a leader and not want to understand the kingdom of heaven. or We have the exact opposite emotion like the disciples had. And I guess you and I, you and I probably have this one. And that is if you go to the next slide. 
We want to know who's the big shot. Who's the big shot in the kingdom of heaven? Who is the greatest in the kingdom? This is cool. This is after the transfiguration. All these things happen. Okay, man, we're with you, Jesus. Who's going to be in charge? Peter and John? James and John? Who will be in charge? The greatest king. What was God's answer? Next slide. He put a child before him. And there's such a truth in this, in living in the kingdom. He called a child and said, said before him, Truly I say to you, unless you are converted and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Your intellect can get in the way. We're talking about, we're, we're trying here to provoke one another's faith. We're trying to provoke each other's faith to encourage one another that we each grow in our faith. Because we North Americans have learned over time, when you pray for people, most of them don't get healed, do they? When you talk to people about the Lord, most of them don't get saved. We've learned that's the normal. And what has happened is we've accepted that as the normal. And it shouldn't be the normal. Okay? And do you have the faith like a child? The Bible said it, that settles it, right? The Bible said it, that I believe God wants to do miracles in our age, wants to bring healing, wants to bring deliverance in our age. But we got to raise our level of faith, guys. And that's each of us. I've got to raise my level of faith. And I love that there, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, the guy, Jesus said, do you believe? And he goes, I believe, Lord. And immediately followeth, help my unbelief. I believe, Lord, but I really don't believe. And that's true for most of us, okay? Lord, help our unbelief. Encourage our belief to believe in you. To believe it's different this time when we pray for others. To believe. And as I, I was saying, when one person's faith is elevated, it elevates another person's faith. And that elevates another. It's like that yeast, right? Oh, wow. Wow. Gaze walking in faith. Okay. Ray's walking in faith. It starts to elevate all of us. It's going through the lump is the thing that he wants to do. Uh, the greatest... We are citizens of heaven, we're called. We're no longer, you know, I have a passport that says I'm a U.S. citizen. But really, we are citizens of heaven. And the book of Hebrews is described as the Hall of Fame people said they considered themselves strangers and exiles in this world. Most of us are very at home in the world. We navigate the world very well. We start to take on the values of the world if we're not careful. And they said, no, they consider them strangers, exiles. They look for a city whose maker was God. Are we living in his kingdom? When we wake up, yeah, I'm physically here, but I'm an exile here. Uh, old King James calls it a pilgrim here. This is a temporary life. That 70 to 80 years. Uh, there are rights that come with citizenships. That is the right to speak the truth of God. That is the right to pray for people to be healed. That is the right to walk in liberty. That's part of those rights. I've lived in uh, four different countries, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, South Africa, and India. I didn't have any rights in those countries, right? If they said your visa's done, I got a call at one time at 10, you got to be at the airport in two hours because your visa's expired, you know? And, you know, I'm not a citizen. But we have rights as citizens, but we also have responsibilities, don't we? There are responsibilities. What's my father asking of me? And not only we, we citizens, we're ambassadors. We had a mayor here, Tilney, was an ambassador one time to, to Mexico. So as an ambassador, you go and you represent your kingdom to that kingdom. So if I'm in Belgium, I'm representing the interest of the United States to the Republic of Belgium or whatever they are, right? So each of us are ambassadors for Christ, that we're representing Christ and his kingdom to this world around us. That's what we're called to do. Peter said, you are a chosen generation. 
he went back to Exodus, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. Do you realize you're God's own special people? The one who said universe be, and it was. The one who said light be, and there was light. That he has made you his own special people. That you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. You're his own special people to proclaim his praises for you. I'm going to close with this. And... Uh, Oh, here we go. We got it up there. Remember, they considered themselves strangers and pilgrims on this earth. But Paul says, now this has been fulfilled in Christ. Now that you have the blood of Jesus on you, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and are of God's household. Let's say we're of God's household. Let's say it together. One, two, three. We're of God's household. Okay, guys, if we lived that, our life would be so different, wouldn't it? If we remembered that. And we're going to leave here tonight, and I hope that these words stay with us. I hope Monday morning when you wake up to go to the workplace, you remember, I'm of God's household. I'm here. He's called me here in El Paso to work at Arby's and, you know, cut beef and bus tables, but I'm of his, I'm not really doing that, okay, uh, but I'm of God's household. If we live in his kingdom, then we have grace in the time, we have favor in the time of chaos. We don't have to live this tormented lives. We don't have to live with the uncertainty. I know it's frustrating. I, you know, I'm tormented when I drive in El Paso and it's like, can anyone else in this town, where did they get their driver's license at? How could this happen? Would you get off your phone and go through the light so I can get through this line or whatever? But you know, really my life's not full of torment. You know, that there is a grace that each of us are called to live in. There's that favor of the Lord that he wants to have upon us. And part of the provoking one another is reminding one another of that favor. Favor. Uh, what Gail said, to see the best in people. What Gay said, to say hello to somebody. That you are a special person. You are special in God's eyes. You are worthy in God's eyes. He sent his son to die for you because you were that special in his eyes. If we see ourselves like that, a lot of freedom comes. And as Bridget said, it doesn't matter what we've done. He forgives every sin, right? He cleanses us from all unrighteousness. How many feel clean tonight? Why don't we stand as the worship team comes back? And again, fellow citizens of heaven, pilgrims, ambassadors. This is the ambassadors meeting, okay? The ambassadors meeting. Tonight, when you go out, if you go to get dinner or go home and pick up something to go, you're an ambassador for Christ. Tomorrow morning when you wake up, you're ambassadors for Christ. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we are ambassadors for Christ. But more than that, we are children of God, the most wonderful and loving God. And I'm going to pray that, that that sense of that freedom come upon us. I mean, the Holy Spirit was here earlier, and I think they're going to bring him back. And, he'll... and again, be washed in his love, washed in his love. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Speak those words. That you are a special people before God. Speak that word that we are citizens of heaven. Speak that word that we don't have to live the life of chaos. Speak that word that we can have peace in you. Speak the word that we have peace and joy, unspeakable joy in the kingdom. I pray that over your people. Again, why don't you raise your hands? 
and surrender. And uh, last week you did pretty good at prayer. If anyone wants prayer, can we have some people up here for prayer? If you're isolating yourselves and uh, for COVID, you might raise your hand and someone may come lay their hand on you and pray for you. But we have not because we ask not. So Lord, we ask for the peace that surpasses all understanding. the joy that you've set before us, that your joy is our strength, that your joy, and Father, I ask that each and every one here would know what it feels like to be clean before you, that you have cleansed our hearts, you have nailed to the cross everything written in the ordinance against us, and by the blood of Jesus, we have peace with you. Just say thank you for peace, Lord. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for that peace, Lord, that just flows upon your people. We just bind the accuser of the brother, and he's going to come in and say, you're not worthy. Yes, you are. The good thing is none of us were worthy, but he made us worthy, okay? I'm not worthy. Bridge is not worthy. Annie, certainly not worthy. No, <laughs> not worthy. Ray and Melody and Shane. Your passport, your real passport says heaven. Your real passport says your father is God almighty. Let your freedom come tonight, Lord. Let it come. Let it come as we leave here tonight, Lord. We know how much we're loved. We know how much we're loved and cared for. That each and every person here would feel it deep down inside, Lord. That this is tangible and real. The Son has set free is free indeed, and you're pouring out your spiritual freedom upon the people. Lord, bless you, Lord, bless you.
you need to leave, you can take off. If the worship team, you want to play for a little bit longer, if you just want to bask in the presence of the Lord, I'm going to invite you to just take a few minutes. But if you need to go, that's okay. That's okay. Thank you, guys. Bless your people. Bless your people. Bless those that you've called. 